All right, everyone, you ready for this? We are diving headfirst into the world of K-dramas today. I am so ready. Specifically, no gain, no love. I am telling you, this show has everything. Fake marriage, check. Yeah. Office romance, of course. And the hidden identities, oh my gosh, don't even get me started. It's like the ultimate recipe for K-drama goodness. Right, and the best part is you get to be completely caught up on all the drama yeah. without you know, actually having to watch hours and hours of television. Okay, so for anyone who is maybe new to this whole K-drama world... Welcome. Yes, welcome. Think of it as a crash course in everything that makes these shows so addictive. Totally. Like complex characters and, of course, those high-stakes romances. Yes. And don't forget those plot twists. Oh, the plot twists. I live for them. They get you every time. Yeah, every time. So we are talking about episodes 7 and 8 of No Game, No Love. Just as a quick reminder, the show centers around Hey Young and Jiwook who decide to, wait for it, get fake married. Classic. Right. And, of course, she's got that whole ambitious thing going on, and he's, well, he's got that mysterious charmer thing down pat. Obviously. Naturally. And, of course, their worlds collide. They collide in the most chaotic and hilarious ways. Oh, my gosh, yes. And, of course, did I mention her ex-boyfriend, Muji, who is now, wait for it, their co-worker. Awkward. So awkward. It's like the writers are intentionally trying to torture us. Oh, 100%. And that, my friend, is the beauty of this contract marriage trope, as it is called. The gift that keeps on giving. Honestly, it just sets the stage for endless romantic tension and comedic gold. The best of both worlds. Right. Like, if you think about it, some other shows that come to mind, like Full House. Oh, a classic. Marriage contract. Yeah. Like, all of these, they just play on the same idea. I'm here for it. But anyway, we should probably get back to No Game, No Love. Right, right, yes. Okay, so in episodes seven and eight, they took this whole fake marriage chaos, like, to a whole new level. Okay, so remember that whole love triangle situation we talked about? Oh, yeah. Picture this. Yeah. Hey, Young, Ji Wook, and Woo Jae wake up in bed together after a night of one too many drinks. I'm already cringing. Right. Comedy gold. The stuff that K-drama dreams are made of. Seriously. For real, though. I mean, this is the kind of scene that makes you, like, laugh out loud at the absurdity of it all. Yeah. But at the same time, you are also like, oh, my God, what are they going to do now? Right. Like, how are they going to get themselves out of this one? And it really forces Hey Young and Jiwook to get serious about selling their fake marriage. Especially to HR. Oh, especially HR. They are watching their every move. Okay, so to kind of keep up appearances... Ji Wook ends up having to move into Hey Young's rooftop apartment. But are you ready for this? Hit me with it. It's the same apartment he used to live in. No way. I know. Talk about awkward. Seriously, how do the writers come up with this stuff? Right. And it's these little details, right, that make you start to think, wait a minute, is there something more going on here? A hundred percent. Like, it's textbook K-drama. You've got forced proximity, a shared history. Get ready for the sparks to fly. Oh, there are sparks. And let me tell you, speaking of sparks, Jiwa gets a crash course in Hey Young's personal life when he stumbles upon her, let's just say, adult novelties. Oh, no. His reaction, priceless. I can only imagine. But you know what I really appreciate about that scene? What's that? Even though he was totally caught off guard, he doesn't judge her for it, you know? It's actually really refreshing, especially for a K-drama. Right. He even says something like, my body is my own and I won't do anything my mind goes against. Okay, so not only is he respectful of her boundaries, but he's also got his own set. Exactly. But amidst all of this fake marriage chaos, we've got some real romance starting to brew. Like, are you feeling it? Oh, absolutely. The tension is palpable. Right. And it only gets more intense when Hayum decides to throw a housewarming party. You know, as one does when you're trying to convince everyone your marriage is the real deal. Of course. Cue the awkward encounters, misunderstandings, hidden agendas. It's a recipe for disaster. It's a recipe for K-drama gold. Right. Oh, and speaking of hidden agendas, we can't forget about those subtle interactions between ji Wook and his half-brother, Kyu Hyun. Oh, that's right. The half-brother who has no idea they're actually related. Exactly. The dramatic irony is so thick you can cut it with a knife. Ugh, the writers are just toying with us at this point, but let's be real. Mm. We're all living for that first kiss between Hae Young and ji Wook, right? Oh my god, yes. Yeah? The anticipation was killing me. <laughs> and finally it happens. Finally. But of course there's a catch. There's always a catch. Right. Turns out it was all a strategic move to throw Wu Jae off their scent. Classic. But let me tell you, some viewers were not happy about Hey Young's, shall we say, 
less than enthusiastic kissing style. The term dead fish might have been thrown around a time or two in the comments section. Right. But it does make you wonder, like, what's going on with Hey Young? you know? Is she actually not interested or is there something else holding her back? Excellent point. I mean, she's got a lot going on, career, this whole fake marriage thing. It's a lot to process. Exactly. So maybe she's just not ready to go there yet. Or maybe she just gives really bad first kisses. Hey, it happens. Right. But okay, so despite the whole fake kiss situation, Ji Wook decides to lay his heart on the line. Ah. He confesses his feelings for Hey Young. Wow. Okay, so for anyone who doesn't watch a lot of K dramas, let me just say this is not typical behavior. Not at all. Usually they drag out these misunderstandings for like episodes on end. Oh my gosh, I know. It's like they thrive on the drama. Right. So to have Ji Wook just come right out and say how he feels. It's a bold move. Oh, very bold. And now I'm just left wondering what happens next. Me too. Oh. But while all of that is happening with our main couple, we also have some pretty interesting developments in that subplot with Jayan, you know, Hey Young's friend, and you guessed it, Gyu Yun. Oh, yes. I love him. They are quickly becoming a fan favorite. Right. And this whole subplot just adds a whole other layer to the show. Totally. I mean, for starters, who knew Jayan had a secret life as an erotic novel writer? The plot thickens. I know. And Kiyuan, <laughs> being his completely oblivious self, starts to see Jayon in a whole new light. Especially after he steps in to protect her from your overbearing father. Talk about a swoon-worthy moment. Oh my gosh, right. And just when you think things couldn't get any crazier, bam. The writers hit us with a series of bombshells right at the end of episode 8. Like, how are we even supposed to function after that? I know. They really know how to leave us wanting more. Okay, so first up we have the big reveal about Jaywook's parentage. Which, of course, changes everything. Right. Like, we already knew Chairman Bok was kind of a ruthless guy. Understatement of the year. Right. But now there is a potential threat to Goyun's inheritance, and we all know what that means. Family drama galore. Oh, yeah. Things are about to get messy. And as if that weren't enough, Wu Jae finally puts two and two together. Uh-oh. He figures out that Hey Young and Jiwook's marriage is fake. Of course he does. And he is not giving up without a fight. Did you see that scene where he tries to win Hey Young back? Oh my gosh, the audacity. I know, it's almost impressive. But we can't forget about Yilin either, Wuji's wife. Right. She is not oblivious. Not at all. She's getting more and more suspicious. Uh, she's definitely one to watch. Definitely. <laughs> so to recap, we have a secret love child, a very persistent ex-boyfriend, a suspicious wife, and a fake marriage that's hanging by a thread. It's like the writers are trying to give us a heart attack. Right. It's the perfect recipe for some serious K-drama goodness. Some might even say it's a recipe for disaster. Maybe a little bit of both. But remember all those viewer comments we talked about? Oh, yeah. They were very fixated on Hae Young's reaction to that almost kiss with ji -wook. Yeah, it was kind of underwhelming to say the least. To say the least. One viewer even wondered if maybe, just maybe, her closed eyes during that whole interaction meant that deep down, her feelings were starting to change. Oh, interesting. So like a subconscious tell. Exactly. Like maybe she's trying to deny it, but her body language is betraying her true feelings. Ooh, that is juicy. What else are the viewers saying? Well, they also had a field day speculating about how this whole Ji Wook's father situation is going to play out. Yeah, that's the million dollar question, isn't it? it? Totally. Like, will Chairman Book actually favor Ji Wook, even though he just found out about him? And mm -hmm. how will this affect things between Ji Wook and Ji Hoon? Right. It's like they were just starting to, you know, maybe sort of get along. And now this. It's a lot. But here's a thought. Some viewers think that Chairman Bok might have orchestrated this whole thing. Wait, what? Orchestrated it? How? Like he's using Ji Wook's existence to manipulate his sons. Oh, interesting. So it's like a power play. Exactly. Yeah. He wants to see which one of them will rise to the occasion. He's giving very much King Lear. Right. But let's not forget about Hei Young in all of this. She's not just some pawn in their game. Definitely not. She's got her own ambitions, her own goals. Exactly. And she is not afraid to go after what she wants. Remember how she handled her ex-boyfriend mm. and how she's navigating this whole fake marriage situation with both wit and determination? Yeah, she's a force to be reckoned with. Exactly. But speaking of forces to be reckoned with, l let's talk about Jayan and Guyan for a second. Oh, yes. My favorite subplot. The chemistry between them is off the charts. It's giving enemies to lovers. A hundred percent. You have Jayon, this passionate writer with a secret life, and then you have Jayon, this very stoic CEO, 
who secretly has a soft spot for her. I love their dynamic. It's gold. Yeah. And that scene where Jayan discovers Jayan's identity as an erotic novelist. I died. I know. He was reading her work, completely engrossed, and then bam, he realizes it's her. That look on his face was priceless. They're pure comedy. Right. But it wasn't all fun and games. Remember when he found out she filed that lawsuit against his company? Oh, right. Because of those nasty comments. Yeah, the comments about her work. And those were written by Ha Jeon. Who is both Ja Yeon's employee and Ja Yeon's muse. It's a whole thing. Talk about a tangled web. Uh, but that just makes it more interesting, right? Oh, absolutely. It's like the writers are just throwing everything at the wall and seeing what sticks. And you know what? It's working. It really is. But I think we need to talk about those cliffhangers at the end of episode eight. Oh, don't even get me started. I am still recovering. They really know how to leave us wanting more. Right. Like, even though they have this whole lawsuit thing hanging over their heads, yeah. they still manage to find some common ground. Exactly. It's not like your typical K-drama where the characters are constantly at each other's throats. Well, there is that whole love triangle situation. But Okay, true. But... Even that's handled with a bit more maturity than we're used to seeing, wouldn't you say? Definitely. I mean, remember how we were talking about how this show really subverts those classic K-drama tropes? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Like, it's like the writer sat down and said, okay, let's take everything everyone thinks they know about K-dramas and flip it on its head. And I am here for it. <laughs> but in all seriousness, what do you think is the most refreshing change? Honestly? It's the direct communication. Okay, yes. Finally. <laughs> like, seriously, in most K-dramas, we're stuck watching these characters dance around their feelings for, like, ten episodes straight. And don't even get me started on those misunderstandings that could be cleared up with, like, a two-minute conversation. Right. It's infuriating. But in No Gain, No Love, these characters actually talk to each other. Like, ji confession to Hey Young, that was huge. He actually used his words instead of just staring longingly at her from across the room. Okay, but speaking of Hey Young, yeah. how great was her response? Like, she didn't shy away from her feelings or pretend to be clueless. She was just like, okay, I hear you. I need some time to process this. Right, because let's be real, she has a lot on her plate. Exactly. It's so refreshing to see a female character who's allowed to be direct and decisive. A hundred percent. Like, it's like the writers are saying, hey, women can be straightforward, too. We don't always need a man to tell us what we're feeling. Yes. Thank you. But it's not just the romance where this show shines. Like, they tackle some pretty heavy stuff, too. Mm. Career, ambitions, family, secrets, the ups and downs of relationship. It's all very relatable. It's like they took a peek into our lives and said, let's make a show about this. Right. And yet they still managed to make it entertaining. Oh, absolutely. Like, remember that scene where ji Wook tries to cook for Hey Young? Even though his cooking skills are, let's just say, questionable. It was adorable. It was. Like, mm. beneath that super confident exterior, yeah. we see the softer side of him. He wants to take care of Hey Young. Even if it means completely ruining dinner. It's the thought that counts, right? Exactly. Well, as much as I would love to stay in this K-drama bubble forever, all good things must come to an end. Sadly, yes. So as we wrap up this deep dive into No Gain, No Love, what are some things our listeners should keep in mind as they continue watching? Okay, well, first and foremost, brace yourselves, because the drama is about to get kicked into high gear. Oh, I believe it. We've got this love triangle that's far from over. Family secrets are coming out left and right. And let's not forget that inheritance battle. Oh, yeah, that's going to be good. So juicy. But amidst all the chaos and the drama, just remember to pay attention to those small, character-driven moments. A look, a conversation, a simple act of kindness. Those are the moments that really stay with you. Exactly. And for our listeners who are already hooked on No Gain, No Love, and let's be real, how could you not be? We want to hear your predictions. Oh, yes. Tell us everything. How do you think this whole inheritance battle is going to play out? Mm -mm. Are Hei Young and Ji Wook ever going to get their act together? What about Ja Yan and Ji Han? Are they endgame? So many questions. Head over to our social media pages and let us know what you think we love hearing from you. Until next time, happy watching. Happy watching.